Hey, what's up, YouTube? Um, continuing our last tutorial. Uh, yeah, today we're gonna make a gun. So, um, remember because uh, we're steering using only the keys. So, I'm currently using the arrow keys, space bar, and now we're gonna use shooting using the control key. So, let's first make like the same, uh, like the same idea we had in my previous tutorial, where the gun is a separate object and the script is on that separate object so you can actually have gun switching um, I know I didn't have gun switching in my previous tutorial series but in this one I want to so right let's create that gun script great open it <coughs> my voice is a bit um, off today I don't know why alright so first let's set up our variables like to start now first we're gonna have like functioning uh, well, functionality then we're gonna add some like effects like you know smooth follow the gun you know that uh, when the player rotates the gun smoothly rotates after him and all that stuff so first let's get ri let's get you know the stats and all the ray casting going and then we'll do those effects so um first thing we need is an enumeration because we're gonna have more multiple gun types we're gonna have a, um <coughs> uh automatic semi automatic shotgun and burst rifle now this toy we're only gonna do the automatic and semi-automatic because they're pretty easy and then we'll get into the burst fire and shotgun mode so just to make this tutorial shorter so first type uh, public enum gun type <clears throat> and then open to curly brackets and you can do this like that or just in one line it really doesn't matter <clears throat> but make sure each item in this enumeration separated by a comma. Uh, and for those of you who don't know what enumerations are, they're basically like a list of values to choose from. So uh, if you don't know, just follow up with me and then you'll see in a minute. It's pretty easy to get. So first type of gun we're going to have is automatic. I think that's how it's spelled. I don't know. I'm just going to make spelling mistakes. I don't really care. They don't matter that much unless I'm calling a function that Unity already made for me. And then now uh, the next firing mode is semi automatic. <clears throat> next is shotgun. And then it's burst fire. <clears throat> okay. Now here we'll make first of all the damage. Make sure that's a float. Next, that's um, I think the spread. <clears throat> Make sure that's a flow too. And uh, next, that's the recoil, but we won't use it in this tutorial. We'll just have it there, you know, when we're gonna use it. <clears throat> uh, next is the weight. So this basically. It will say how uh, how heavy is the gun, and the heavier it is, the longer you know the the smooth follow of the gun. You know when we turn that it uh, that it smoothly comes up. So the bigger this is, the longer it takes the gun to get back in there. So I'll just call this weight <coughs> that at float, and then last but not least, um, well not last but gun type so we'll call that type and make it a type gun type now for those of you who don't know enumerations the second I made this uh, a, a variable of the type in, of this enumeration means now type can only equal two things of the gun type enumeration so type can only equal either gun type dot and either automatic burst fire semi-automatic or shotgun that's all it can equal. See, only these blue values. <coughs> so that's basically um, enumeration. And the reason I use it really is just because it looks a lot nicer in uh, Unity in the editor. So you'll see how it looks in a moment. Um. Oh yeah. Now, second of all, we need var clip. Um. No, we call it var mag size. Leave that type int because you can't have point something bullets. <coughs> and then we're gonna make a couple of private variables. Private 
var um, ammo. Actually, you know what? We'll make the ammo var ammo. <clears throat> we'll make it public, and then the current in the clip will make uh, pub we'll make private, right? So private var mag, which is the current magazine we have, is of type int. <clears throat> then another private var next fire or our firing timer load equals 0, 0.0. It's very important to actually set this to 0, 0.0, otherwise it will return like null value or something. Give you, it, sh it probably will give you an error, even though JavaScript is pretty forgiven, so it might not, but just, you know, let's not take the risk. Set it to 0, 0.0. All right, <clears throat> now let's start coding this. First of all, we want to make a function fire. Oh, and by the way, we won't be doing any particle effects that we'll be doing when we get to the effects tutorial. So first we're going to make function fire. <clears throat> and this is going to be just a regular fire, right? So we'll call this um, fire A for fire automatic, but it will also work with the semi-automatic, right? And the burst fire, I think. Anyway, so fire A. <clears throat> and fire A, first you need a var hit is of type ray cast right cast hit right <clears throat> second var um no we don't need a second var this is it right so now we do if physics and now uh physics dot raycast has a, c a couple of overloads 12 as a matter of fact and what overloads overloads are well basically in modern uh coding languages you can have multiple functions of the same name as long as they each function take diff takes different parameters and that's called overloads basically so in unity in their library they have 12 functions all named raycast and each one takes different parameters and does same thing differently you know with different parameters so we're going to use a different overload of the function raycast and uh the, we're going to take the one where it has uh i think this first one right here no uh is distance yeah i think this one yeah right here um this one where it has a a direction a starting point and a hit and a, you know and a hit ray cast hit so basically we're casting a ray from a, a given vector 3 to a given ve vector 3 and beyond that so you'll see how this works now we're going to want to raycast it from not from the center of the screen like we did in my previous series but from the cent from the f from the position of the gun transform to the gun's forward so let's do that <coughs> transform whoops transform dot position <coughs> and then here we put transform dot forward and then here we just put hit and here we put math f dot infinity we want to cast it to infinity you can limit you can put like a range variable and then put it right here and that will be the range of your bullet spot i don't see a reason why you know it's just going to be annoying for the player <laughs> to you know, be frustrating to try and snipe someone and then the bullet doesn't reach it so <laughs> all right now in here what we're going to want to check is if we hit another player because that's the only thing we're going to be hitting either walls or players and we don't care if we hit a wall maybe we'll put in some explosive barrels later but for now we just want to check if we hit a player so if <clears throat> um, hit dot uh, transform dot game object dot tag <clears throat> equals equals player with a capital P that's the default player tag that Unity gives us then hit dot transform dot send message and then what message what do we call the message oh we didn't have a a damaging message so we'll call this function damage so we can actually damage the player and <clears throat> because this is a message i'm just gonna put m underscore damage so I'll know what what is a message and what is not. 
because uh, there's something later we need to do with the messages for them to work in networking, right? So we can send uh, messages to players across the net, not just on localhost, and not localhost on the local game. Anyway, so call this m dot damage, so you know that's this is just an indicator. This is a message. I strongly suggest you do this. And then here, simply uh, give it the parameter damage. Um, parameters type float so we'll type D as type float and then we'll do health minus equals D brilliant all right <clears throat> we'll do set the send message uh, M damage damage and we'll put the gun damage as the ga as damage this is pretty simple you won't see it work until we actually get the network thing going so we'll just leave this for now and this is pretty much it we don't have any spark effects or any um what do you call it sound effects yet so actually we do want it we do want it like a hit indicator so we'll just put like um a temporary sparks variable sparks sparks effect I'll just call it sparks of type transform right later we'll replace that with particle effects Let's just put something there now and we'll say sparks dot position equals hit dot point all right now let's uh let's uh make our main uh coding now main uh gun script all right so in the function update you want to do a switch, which is basically short for doing an else if. You'll see how. You want to do a switch on the type variable. And then you want to check what type it is. So, case, the type variable is equal to gun type dot. Uh, so, being completely automatic. <coughs> yeah, that's how I spelled it. Then. You do these two dots and then enter. Come on. No. Yes. All right. So case it equals uh, automatic. Then if um, input. Excuse me if my mouse is bothering you. Input dot get button and you want to do only get button, not get button up. Fire one. God, what is happening to me today? All right. And and time dot time is bigger than uh what you call it? Next fire. <coughs> then next fire equals time dot time. Oh, a form available we forgot to make is fire rate. So. Then um far rate we'll just call it rate no we'll call it fire rate fire rate is of type float of course and then we'll put this right here plus fire rate and then here we'll say fire a all right all good oh yeah and I forgot do mag minus minus <clears throat> and now after you've done your first case at, at the end of each case you want to break out unless you're returning because you just want to end that case so um, now all it's left to do is make the semi-automatic right so send it automatic you can just copy this paste it right under here I think it's parsed, yeah, and then change this to dot semi automatic. And then simply all you gotta do is just do button up. That's it. Get button up. That's all you gotta do. So, uh, that's pretty much it. And uh, let's give this a test run. Now, let me just pause this. <coughs> Alright, excuse me for that. Now, uh, let's get it testing gun alright so first let's create sparks uh, temporary sparks prefab or object whatever 
Um, we'll make it a cube. Take off its box glider, very important. Call it sparks. So we know that's what we're using as sparks. And just resize it to 0 0.2 so we can see exactly where we hit. So you know what? Even 0 0.1. Now, this is kind of barely visible when everything's the same color. So we'll just change its color by creating a uh, material. We'll call this sparks. And we'll just change its color to like uh, red. Yeah, just simple test. All right, so now we have a red little cube. Now that you have that, we need to set up a gun. So let's create just a regular cube. And if you if you have a problem that your gun shoots sideways, then uh, make sure that its Z is the long one, like it's going a lot along the Z axis and not the Y axis. And uh, you'll see why. And so, resize 0 0.1, 0 0.2, and just make that like 0 0.8. Yeah, that'll be your gun. Alright, so now let's just place that right in front of the camera. First of all, in the player. You don't even have to put in the camera, rename it to gun, because the camera and the player are rotating the same way. Now, reset position, reset rotation, and now we'll be exactly the forward. And then make sure it looks nice in the camera view. Right? And I just set this up so it's uh, easier to see this way. I can just revert it like that. Okay. Now make sure it looks good in the game view. Mess with it a bit. You can use the previous setup I made, you know, to adjust your your gun. I'm just gonna put it like that. Yeah, that's pretty centered. Good. Now once you got that, remove the box collider because it will bother your movement. I don't have any colliders at all right now except for the player. And then put on the gun our gun script and set this as the sparks. And you can just set everything here to 1. doesn't matter except the fire rate. If you want to fire it really slowly, set it to 1. Otherwise, set it to 0 0.1. Set it to automatic for now. Um, if it works in automatic, it will work on semi-automatic. Oh, and la one last thing. So it's easier to test. We'll just get a quick uh, like shooting wall that we can shoot at, and we can see our uh, results. So we'll place this right here. Scale it 10 on the x-axis. Actually, 20 on the x-axis. Five on the y. Perfect. Just move that in front of the player. Good. Now save our scene, and there we go. We aim there, we sh or that's where we're shooting. And you notice if you hold it and move, then it will move. The speed of its movement will be uh, according to your fire rate. If I put zero fire rate, then it will move flawlessly. See? But the, the slower my fire rate is, the laggier it moves. So that's our nice little gun system. And you can even check this semi-automatic if you put that. And now if you hold it, whoops, now if you hold it and move, it won't happen. you got to click again. Alright, so in the next tutorial we'll do um, the shotgun and the burst fire. And then we'll apply all the effects of the gun. And then hopefully we'll start getting to custom customization. You know, Call of Duty like customization. Uh, just like you've requested. And we're going to make a serious multiplayer game. Uh, thanks for watching. Keep updated. I know I've been, uh, you know, uh, making tutorials very slowly, but I'm going to try to speed it up and make a lot more tutorials. I know I've been doing it really slow, so I'm going to try to do like three or two every week. So keep updated, and thanks for watching.